So I'm curious then with your video, if we're talking about narcissism the way we're talking about it now, like why call out Steven? Like why bring his his face into this? Like what was it in that moment that made you feel like I'm going to rile up? It's because of the comparisons that the person in my video had made about mm. himself and Steven or like con condemnations of Steven by way of comparison. Yeah. And uh, and I'm just afraid of Steven. Yeah. What is that? Like he's not very scary. He barely has muscles. I know it's about streaming. I'm making a yeah. joke. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But uh, it's just like if you were if you had never met this person you're talking about and you were like completely new, I'm pretty sure they would treat you very different. Right. And it yeah. would look very different. You wouldn't be able to see the same things. Right. Um, it, it would be more like hidden. Yes. Um, so could that be the, the case with Destiny? No. Obviously, it could be. I um. You're asking me if I'm like misreading him. I could be right. I, I could be wrong. <laughs> okay. So like I could be wrong. I just don't see enough of the same overlap or the feeling I get with people is like Steven doesn't give me this is so woo woo, but he doesn't give me like bad vibes the way that this person does in my life. Because like this person in my life, when I meet other people that are similar, I'm like, oh, you have the tenants. Steven doesn't have any of the overlapping tenants with my narcissist. So I just can't put him in the same category because neither does Sneeko. Sneeko and Steven remind me so much of each other, but they're in different categories as well. They're mm -hmm. totally different. But they just feel like hurt boys who've never been loved and they don't know how to actually admit they want to be loved. So they trick women and trick people and they don't mean to. But that doesn't feel like the same as a narcissist who never feels loved because they can't give it to themselves. Steven, Steven and Sneeko do love parts of themselves. They know what it is to love parts of themselves. I think my NPD person like does not even understand how to love himself, even an iota versus like. That actually does make sense. So that's why I see the differences Sorry. personally. Yeah. Um, does your friend yeah. love himself at all? Any part of no. himself? No, yeah. no, no, no. Oh, no, oh, no. So that's, I don't think I don't think Steven falls into that and that's, category. That's, yeah, Discord is bad, really bad with that. Anyway, we were going to talk about uh, your narcissistic boyfriend abused me too. I'm really proud about that title. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, if you want to talk about like abuse, if you're like a guy... You have to like nest it in like a woman sort of, you know, it's, it, yeah. <laughs> kind of, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you feel like that is um, something you're going to do moving forward? Like to get your point across? Well, just, are you saying that men just don't get the representation? Um, people just uh, don't care about men as much. Um, do you think men care about themselves? No. Do you think that's probably why people don't care Not as much as them? they should. Probably, yeah. Like, I feel like we're all, like, society's a reflection of us. So if men don't put the effort to care about themselves, like, nobody else will. And that's how women have been dealing with it in, like, minorities their whole lives. Why do you think men are so slow to figure that out? I think it's a cycle, okay? I think you're the way you're, you're framing this... Okay, you're really uh, like the way you're framing this is putting it all on the men, but I I see a lot of these gender dynamics as cyclical. So I think that a lot of the things that men complain about about women mm -hmm. are partly caused by how they treat women, and say, a lot of the things that women complain about men are partly caused by how they treat men, and it's a cycle and it keeps perpetuating itself back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth. So I think men are like partially like men don't want to be vulnerable but also women don't want them to be vulnerable but that's also because they have no experience with men being vulnerable and right. if only men would do it but then it would put them at it, like the, the way things are is always going to be the easiest way to go like the red pillars are right um that like their prescription is like if if you want to game the city not all of their stuff but like yeah. in general their prescription is like it, this is how things are so deal with it and like but then you don't have to do that. Yeah, I think I think you know you're. I obviously don't agree with that, but yeah, yeah. So okay, I, there's so much we could say about that, but I don't want to derail us too far from your video. If, Go ahead, tell the me. The first time I talked to you, mm -hmm. um, you gave me a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. um, this is like one of the first times I streamed, and I kind of just like shut down. I think, and uh, I got like quiet and stuff. And I think that this video is a good illustration of like why that is and like how I've like grown as a person because I was just just coming out of that relationship and 
I, I like so anybody with a strong personality, I would just kind of like crumple. That makes sense to me, actually. I didn't realize that's where you were at the time. Do you, did you um were you off put by me? Or were you like, did you see me no. as like the enemy? I mean, actually, like after that I did. But uh but like just because I don't know, I was I was angry. I was angry. I I was angry at you because I didn't end up for myself. Yeah. What would you have done different if you did stand up for yourself? I don't know. I, like, it could have been anything. I probably would have fucking had something to fucking say. <laughs> I, I don't, is swearing okay on your stream, by the yeah. way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it okay yeah. on yours? <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, you... I I knew that this this would kind of like trigger you the 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 little reference to destiny, mm. and uh, and then I saw you talking about Mr. Girl, mm -hmm. and these are good examples. I think that we generally have a different way we're using the word narcissist, and I put it in mm. my in my description. I put a disclaimer, like a legal one, like nobody can. I don't want people to use the video to diagnose people with narcissism. Sure. But also, I don't. Um, you seem to care and. It's fine. It's not no disrespect. You seem to care a lot more than me about the diagnosis itself. Mm. Um, and I, I, I believe that a personality disorder diagnosis is, for the most part, um, mostly useful for people who are victims of other people, because I think that there's not a lot of good it does to give the actual like like to give someone who is a narcissist a diagnosis as much as it is to give someone they've abused the diagnosis of the person that did it. Yeah. Um, so I I, I'm a, I'm a behaviorist in that way. So um, I can see what you might be saying about destiny. Um, and especially you've actually met him. <laughs> um, but uh, like the person, my friend that I was talking about in my video, he despised destiny. Oh, funny. Um, but he despised him in a in his very unique way where uh, it was like it was destiny was like the manifestation of all his insecurities about himself. Like nobody could ever, nobody should ever be such a wretched person as destiny. Like mm. like you, I heard that he did this. I heard that he did this. And I'd be like, you do that. You're like you're just like him. And so that is so that is why I I might have a bias in 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 that. Um, I, I'm afraid of destiny. In what way? Um, not like as a person, sure. like a like a human being. Mm -hmm. I, he doesn't. He's not scary. But as like a streamer, mm. um, because I see something happen, which I think Mr. Girl was pointing out. Um. But he did a hard, he didn't do a very good job. Um, but like people will go on Destiny's the fact that Destiny chose Mr. Girl and brought him on is kind of a example of this because Mr. Girl is he rose to that occasion, but he could have failed and, and burned so hard. He's the pedo guy, he could have looked so bad and I think that Destiny doesn't really care about that. He saw the content and he doesn't care about the harm that he could have done to the, the person. And I think that he does that a lot, mm. especially with young women. Yeah. Um, you know, what's interesting. I want to two things before I forget. The first thing you said before you said that I I've met certain people who I know who like hate Destiny. It's because they see themselves in him 100 percent. And a lot of them had like narcissistic parents and I wonder if Steven had narcissistic parents or just somebody in his life or something like that. Sure. OK, fine. Maybe they're obviously trauma like that's not debatable, but it makes me wonder if people know when they hate someone so much, if it's just because they're seeing themselves in them. You know what I mean? So that's a big part of it. And then two on what you just said there, I think without a doubt, Max was correct that something was inappropriate, but it wasn't to the extent Max kept saying it was, which made me wonder why he kept seeing things that weren't there. There's plenty there to criticize. I don't know why he amplified it though. And that's always my concern is like people can be bad without being the worst or people can be he like did it too. 
say it again. Max did it to you. Max did it yeah, to you Yeah, he did too. it to me too. Like I like he did it to me too and I just didn't <laughs> understand like why do you do that? And so it makes me wonder like how much of Max's stories are true? Like did his mom really try to sexually assault him? Did she really kick him out of the house because she wanted to sleep with him? Because that could make a lot of sense for the reason he does things. But yeah, his villain mm. he villainizes people to such an extent that it just like Destiny is only scary if you like see him as somebody who's powerful in your life. Like you know what I mean? And Mr. Girl's only scary. Like the thing is, is like I don't give Destiny power like that because Steven is just like a person to me. But I could see why his orbiters or orbiters in a quotation marks are people who are reliant on him for money, why that might be scary to them. And I think in that case, there's like blurred lines that he doesn't understand um, because he controls like this audience that's like really, you know, I, I, I can see the power dynamics there. I just don't think Steven as an individual is actually aware of any of that i think he's like i think he is i don't think he's smart um, enough like i'm gonna be real like i, I just don't think he's self-aware enough maybe but i i one uh, event sticks in my mind and i hope you don't mind uh like we're like criticizing like destiny and, and you have like a tenuous relationship with him so if that makes you uncomfortable that's okay with me to thank you not i appreciate that. that i'll let you know if it crosses like some boundaries or something okay um I remember after uh, De Destiny was saying that Max is a rapist. Yeah. Um, because like of his of his video. Yeah, I remember the and, video. I've seen it. Yeah, and uh, our relevant was argue like our relevant and Wicked Supreme were arguing with him on his stream mm -hmm. after that about well th this doesn't actually mean he's like a rapist like you 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 could say he could be but it doesn't like prove that he's a rapist mm -hmm. and he was like adamant and just kept like shutting them down and then i remember our rally was like uh like he, he just was like a stick in the mud and he was like just trying to like 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 you know was like pleading for like destiny like give him like a little ground because he like had like a a foot to stand on yeah and uh destiny was like you're you're like on like thin ice like your your orbiter stocks are tanking and then uh rally was like I guess, and then he, he kind of conceded his whole point, and then Destiny was like, "All right, fine, your stocks are gonna be fine. Goodbye," and he like hung up on him, and that that one moment really is stuck with me. Mm, I could see, and I love, I love Relevant. Like I just think he's so lovely. So I love Relly. He's but, great. Yeah, he's great. I will say, um, and Wicked Supreme seems nice as well. I haven't talked to him yet, but. I will say that, okay, Steven is obviously self-aware it's happened. Okay, no, he's aware something is happening, but he refuses to engage with it enough to be responsible for it, which I could see why Max would be upset about that, right? He's playing this game of like, I know it's happening, but I'm going to pretend it's not happening. So like in my worldview, people can be aware something is happening without actually being – without accepting it enough to do something about it. So there's still that ground where they're not actually being aware. It's like when people can logic their way and they're like, I'm introspective because I can say it out loud. But if you can't implement it, you're not really being introspective. So I just don't think Steven is in the, this place yet and I'm trying to like meet him where he is on his journey. I just don't think he's where he – he could be enough to actually hold himself responsible enough to actually see that what he does matters. I just I just don't think he holds himself to that standard internally. Um, but people around him hold him to that standard because he talks like he holds himself to that standard. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he'll say, like, yeah. I don't hold grudges. I'm willing to build the bridge with anyone. I'm willing to do whatever. But he doesn't actually do that. But he says it enough that people believe him. I'm logical. I'm not emotional. He says it enough that people believe him. But he throws tantrums. He breaks up friendships. He like, you know, he's it's like a game everyone's playing. And then the women around him will coddle his feelings and like, it's OK, Stephen, it's OK, which is fair because women, we do that. Even I do. that. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'm like doing it right now. I, mean, I do it. I do it too. I yeah. Do, I don't think it's just women. I th I think it's uh, it's all women and me. All women and Smith. Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, there's something about him where it's like we know you're lovable and everything, but also you're. He reminds me of like when my brothers fuck up. It's like, hey, you're fucking up, and like you should do better. But like your brother's arrogant. He's gonna be like, oh, I'm not fucking up. You're fucking up, and then he's gonna fight with you, and then you guys are gonna like argue, and then you know it is. It feels like family fights, you know. But this is just how people seem to be. You know, but destiny just he. Yeah, I think he's trying. Maybe I watched a little bit of Dr. K and him today and he might be trying to take himself more seriously. But you can see even Dr. K is struggling for him to like see what he's saying. It's very interesting. So I think that that part mm -hmm. of his mystery is what makes people watch him as well. It's like, will destiny figure it out today? Will Steven see it today? I, you know, 
I, I have a I have a less friendly like perspective on this. I'm an optimist. So, so. I, I, I I see that's I, I like that. That's um, but uh, I I I was watching another like bit. He was in like this kind of recently. He was in a hotel room with Melina and Zerka, and mm. they were he was he was sitting at the desk like on his laptop, and they were like to his back and like lounging, and he was like very activated, and they were kind of relaxing. And that dynamic already, like I was like, so so maybe it's just like very biased because that that was triggering memories of this guy I'm making this bit that made that video about, and that would always be he would always be in that position. And Melina had gotten her like cell phone stolen. Mm. And he would not let her take control of that that situation. He was like he 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 was like complete like on top of everything. He gave her no like room to have responsibility for her own issue, which I mean is nice. It, like that's that's what's nice about someone like that. Like if they're like the same type of person, I'm just, like like. It, it, but also it also like it kind of makes you like dependent on them, and. Uh, like he was completely like as he, it was almost as if if Molina was like to take charge like that would be like irresponsible he has to be in charge and Zer then then another like, then there was like the back and forth between him and Zerka like these two very strong personalities Zerk like there was one moment where Zerka like they had to leave the room and they were compl they were all complaining about how they had to leave the room in like 10 minutes. So Zerka calls up the front desk and he's like, oh, by the way, uh, the just so you know, for the next people, the refrigerator isn't working. But, you know, it's fine with me. I just want you to know. And that probably wasn't true. Uh, but it, then he said that to like maneuver. And he's like, OK, well, can, would it be all right if we stayed one more hour? And they, they let him stay another hour. And he's like, see, and they looked all cool for the stream. <laughs> and then Destiny's like, nope, we're leaving now. Yeah, like, interesting. Like immediately after, and that one-upsmanship is like, like he just did like a cool thing for the mm -hmm. stream, and you're just nope, we're leaving now. It's like what? And I was like, oh man, that yeah. hurt. Let me let me like say so. So this is, I understand the perspective, and I think so. Okay, Stephen or wanting to control Melina and the phone situation. Here's my assessment of Stephen. Again, I'm not a therapist or anything, so just like people to people. I think he's not doing it because he's a narc who's trying to like infantilize her. I think he's an ageist who infantilizes Melina, as he often says on stream, right? He often says like, she's young, she's stupid, she does kid things. Like I'm waiting for her to grow up because he wants to assume he's like smarter and better than everyone around him because he's actually like a little child who's like waiting for mommy's approval, which he never will get because his parents are a mess. God bless. No judgment. It happens. We all come from dysfunction. And so I actually don't think it's like narcissism in that sense of like trying to like undermine Molina's like self-confidence. I think he's just trying to be the hero because he really wants somebody to look at him that way. And I think that's probably why it hurt his feelings that I didn't see him like in the way that maybe he thought I could see him. Like he said, Brittany sees me so differently than I see myself. I can't trust her, which is fair, like, right? That's like what that's a fair assessment of the situation but the dilemma is that i can't see him as like a vindictive like narcissist because i know people with npd i think and when i see them it is to, to it is to dangerously infantilize people it is in it's like dangerous destiny steven feels more like like a kid who's just like Somebody like I'm a hero. I, I I can do things too. Like that's what it feels like, which is very different to me. What do you think? Like, do you see it as different or? Well, the person we're both comparing him to another person that's like not like true. here, and yeah, true, the true. person I'm comparing him to was like that. Oh. Um. And and but he would do the like on purpose infantilizing stuff, but like not like. <clears throat> That was also com like intermingled with like a need to like because I, I had called him out because I like I mentioned in the video I was honest with him a lot and that's why we were close for like a long time because he needed I was the best like friend he could have had ever like I, I think really? and I'm, I feel real bad for him because I, I because nobody's ever going to be as honest with him. Mm. And, Can I uh, ask about the age group, age I would, difference between you two? Same exact age. Same exact age. Really, the way you were telling the story, I yes. kept thinking he was older for some reason. Yeah, but he, like, he's, like, really rich and, uh, and, like, really, like, driven and, uh, like, makes himself incredibly miserable, like, because he's focused on all the wrong things. Interesting. Okay. Um, okay. But, um, he just needs 
needs control. And so I would call him out on that. And he would just say, I know what I want. Like him always being the admin of every social group but before like we had discords we had like facebook groups and stuff and then i would throw like coups to like i want to make a new facebook group and i'll be the the admin and, and everything and then he would sabotage it often uh like like secret like and and it would go and it would like get all toxic and shit but he, he wouldn't do it like very directly but mm -hmm. he would always end up and he's like i know what i want and i'm the only one that can make it happen and, and everybody should trust me hmm. And uh, it wasn't about hurting other people. It was about him being in control. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I can see. I see that a lot with like my MPD person who I'm, again, I don't know. Like he was, he was, he wasn't diagnosed with MPD, but I think again, they don't get diagnosed often with it. But I think for the sake of the people in my life, all the books we read on it, it's, he seems to fit the bill of MPD. It's like really interesting because like there is a lot of that. And again, it's like a really difficult illness. And like I, my heart goes out to them because like what a way to be like what a way to suffer in life. Right. It is one of those things that's yeah. really it's like talk about diff. I would take my borderline any day. Right. Like because at least, at least I get better. Statistically, borderlines get better um, with enough therapy. It's just so interesting. So I will say there's a lot there that I think feel similar to other things or other people. And I think that's why I'm being so precise with like a diagnosis or not a diagnosis or at least an assessment or at least an understanding because anyone could sound like a narcissist if you play the story correct, which is what I didn't like about Max because he would take something that like could be that, but then he would twist it. And I'm like, why are you doing it? Like, don't twist it because then that muddies the waters. And that's what my fear is, is that people are going to accidentally- What did you twist? Like he twisted me like having a cult because I had callers. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Absolutely. What a weird... he absolutely. You know, I mean, his, his point is kind of right, sort of. But mm -hmm. I think what he was reacting to, especially being new to streaming, was just what streaming is like at all. Or like like being like like have the like you the way you've like monetized like your your like your content and stuff. He's just um like <clears throat> he's just afraid of and all of that you think so he's just like he's he's you know you're a cult you're a cult i, I think he's just yeah. un he's uncomfortable with what he was growing into and, yeah i uh, feel like fear is like the root of all evil and so that's why i don't like it in people when people are too afraid i just think they're like the problem with society because again like fear just stops you it doesn't allow you to be introspective like fear is really like i think fear is an introspective stopper like i'm afraid to look into myself i'm afraid to face myself i'm afraid to face other people i'm afraid to acknowledge other people live differently than me like it feels like max sometimes forgets like you know the world doesn't revolve around max like the world is very different and unique and nuanced and everybody has a different culture and so sometimes i think it's like really strange that fear of like i'm afraid this could hurt people life itself hurts people so we're not actually trying to get rid of harm. Fair. But we're, why not? I don't think that's not? fair. Why not? Wait, Tell me. Because, because I think that that is the, um, what depends on how much, I don't think that he's like a holy warrior on like a mission to change. <laughs> like, I don't think he, he wanted to change you or okay. anything. I think he, he, he just wants to like, to frame things in a way, because this, this is something I do too. So that's why I'm take like I'm I'm defending him, but I, I I like pointing out things that I think are like immoral, but that's not a condemnation of the other person. And I do immoral things, or like it's things that are just aren't perfect. And I think that's interesting, and and it's like something to to think about. But I think with you, he just went a bit too. I think he regrets it. Okay, mm. I call. Okay, so I I told you in a message that I sent you that I think by like by what you're like but by your standards i think he might be a narcissist sure and i i called him out in private uh about it and it actually was related to you mm. but interestingly though what he said about it was actually affirmed by what you said about it in that stream too so he's right and i was projecting on him um that my about my friend that i was talking about in the video but i i said that uh that he it was when you were looking to talk to people with age difference relationships mm, and i was yeah. like you you should talk to her about that because um I, like maybe she doesn't want to talk to you but maybe she can like like at, like criticize you maybe like she would like that <laughs> and so i was like you should you should reach out to her and uh, and he's like she doesn't want to talk to me that is true and, I, uh, have and then I, <laughs> I know and uh and you you said you you you're not you, the other day you said yeah. that you're 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 not interested in talking to him ever again. Yeah. Um. And so he was right, but I didn't I didn't see that, and I was like, 
I think that you are just you don't want to like ex experience your own shame. I think that's why you're afraid to reach out. And and I and I was like I was saying I think that you might actually be a narcissist. Mm. Um, but I was wrong. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. That specific thing. It is interesting. Like I think that's the hardest part is like watching people with so much self awareness. Like like Mr. Girls, Steven, people in the space are so self aware. But then even me, we have our shortcomings and our our biases and it takes like a very spe specific person to I think bring out the best in us or to have like good conversations with us to do that like I know I can't see Max fully I don't understand him and I can't do that and I'm sure there's like ways I don't see Steven which is why I failed in communicating with him and like showing myself to him and that's what I kind of like always attribute it to because I feel like when people see each other like there's just less mi miscommunication right like most of the time when I get along with people like we're good to go I don't fight with most people I know. And when I do, I'm like, oh, we must like, I must not see a part of you, right? So no matter the journey Max is on or anyone is on, I want them to know like it is valid. But like narcissism is something we all have, like according to psychology, it's just the spectrum in which we experience. And then there's NPD, which is like the diagnosed right. personality disorder. So I think Max is probably just high on narcissism and probably so is Steven and probably is most YouTubers compared to the regular populace, <laughs> you know? And so I can understand like the fear around that and all of that, but I can, so I'm curious then with your video, if we're talking about narcissism, the way we're talking about it now, like why call out Steven? Like why bring his, his face into this? Like, what was it in that moment that made you feel like I'm going to rile up? It's because of the comparisons that the person in my video had made about mm. himself and Steven or like con condemnations of Steven by way of comparison. Yeah. And uh, and I'm just afraid of Steven. Yeah, what is that? Like, he's not very scary. He barely has muscles. I know, it's about streaming. I'm making a yeah. joke. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But uh, it's just, like... So, like, when this stuff was going down... And, I mean, I'm, I'm like, embarrassed of, like, my, like, early streams. I was just so, so like, meek. But I was going to... I did a... a a stream that was the interrogation of Mr. Girl. Mm. And I got like all like anybody that could call themselves a Mr. Girl orbiter and like some like mods in his Reddit and stuff and people that had criticism of, of him and to ask him questions about his investigation. And before that happened, so I, I paid Destiny $50 and I went on to stream because like if you if you like do that and like you're the highest tier, then you can yeah. go on. And it's like so I and I, I was like, so I want to know what questions do you have? Like, I like, so I'm going to be doing this. Went, and he like ripped into me and I was trying to go in like good faith. And he, the fact that I was going into it in good faith, like, like, I, I don't know what, what I just want to, I want to know what questions you have that you might can be concerned about. And I want to, invest. I want to ask, cause I, I wanted to drill him about his, the ethical standards he was holding himself to when conducting the investigation. People didn't like that. They wanted mm -hmm. me to rip into him. But the fact that I wasn't interested in ripping into Max and I was like being very good faith, that pissed off Destiny as if I was doing something wrong. And he like tore into me and he like at the, the at the time he would say, I love you at the end of every time he would sign off with anybody. He said, I love you. Wait, wait, wait. No, I hate you. And mm -hmm. then. Uh, yeah. Wait, Mr. Girlwood or Steven Wood? Stephen would he would Stephen say I would. love you after at the end of every time he talked mm -hmm. to anybody and never mm -hmm. talked to him before and he said I love you and then he said no way I hate you mm -hmm. and then yeah. when Elder Drazi went on after that and then he's and then he's like and then I asked uh, Elder in his chat I was like ask him how much it ask him if he loves you or if he hates you and uh then he was like uh well I don't hate you as much as as Smith like I, I hate Smith like 99 percent but yeah. uh, but you, I, I I only hate you like like twenty percent. Yeah. Do you think but, he's like negging or flirting? Because I see that as flirting. Well, like I feel like he's negging you because like it's not reasonable. Like he can't, in all seriousness, make the statement. So it's like a joke, right? Am I autistic? I feel like that's a joke. If the, if you're right, if you're right, then I was too fragile to see it in that moment. Mm, I mean, to be fair, I think that's Steven's charm is like he will use language that is technically reserved for intimacy and it'll make people feel close to him. It'll make him think he's closer to people. And then he'll also act distant and confuse people. And I think he doesn't mean to do it, but he knows he's doing it like flirting in the same way. Like when you flirt with people, um, you definitely like create an intimacy that makes them feel close to you. But then 
it could also be rooted in something real. And, like he could be saying, I hate you and it's rooted in some realness and then I love you. And that's like, who knows? But the problem is, is like, we yeah. don't know any more than he knows. And I just don't think he knows. My girlfriend, I remember like, cause I started dating like a four weeks ago or something. And I remember like early mm -hmm. on, I was like, I was, we were talking about it, like the, the way that things had started. And I was like, by the way, I was negging you. I didn't realize it was, but I was like negging you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it happens that way. Congratulations on finding love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you think that Max is a narcissist? Well, I think he's high in the, I think he's really high in the narcissistic scale, which to be fair, if his mother's stories about his mother are real and his family, that would kind of make sense, right? Because like if the trauma is real, then he's just like a pretty basic product of trauma. And I think where he fails is projecting that trauma on to people. I think that's like a part of it maybe. Like that is the most annoying thing about him. Look, I don't like it when people do that in general unless they can preface it with like, I could be totally wrong. But Max doesn't preface things with I could be totally wrong, does he? No. no. I, th I think he doesn't like that you do. Yeah, too. I think, well, because I could be wrong. Like, I hate to say it, but I'm kind of a humble bitch. Like, I know I could be wrong. <laughs> and I feel like Max needs a little humility. Especially yeah. for every time he's been wrong. <laughs> like, okay, I think that I see you guys as like very similar, like maybe not necessarily as big people, but like sure. as like thinkers. Yeah, um, fair. And I think the main difference, and, and I mentioned this to him, not regarding you, um, but I think that the thing that makes it hard for people to see him is his relationship to his parents because he his his way to solve his relationship with his parents was to cut them out of his life completely okay and i think that that comes through in everything he does like he, like everything he does the confidence the the willingness to not say that i might be wrong like all of that i think is because of that it's it's i think that that is and you have like a very much opposite way of of handling things. You you you're like take things for for who take people for who they are. My parents are homophobic, right? Mm -hmm. And but like but they're good in this way, mm -hmm. and they're not good in this way. I need to know. And so his his um his way of confronting that is complete severance. So yeah, yeah. I think uh, to be fair, I think some people have worse parents. <laughs> Like if I think I wasn't gay and if my siblings weren't gay and I think like we would have had a less trauma growing up. I just think I just, you know, I didn't win the lottery there with like the perfect like pro gay, pro trans, pro sex work parents. You know what I mean? So I think I, I think we're all born into levels of dysfunction. And I think Max probably just experienced a larger thing. And so did Steven. Like they experienced dysfunction on a level that I, I didn't. Do you remember? I don't know if you ever saw it, but we did a stream, the three of us. And I was feeling very on edge during this stream. Um, one, because I was in the middle of doing my hair and I got called on. But two, like, I do feel like Max was being disingenuine with the way that he was communicating with me, but that could be me. And so I was like on edge during this conversation. But basically, like, they were talking about like hitting girlfriends. And I gave an example of like a way I could relate. But Max is like, that's obviously not the same thing. And I'm like, okay. So yeah, I'm just not like on this level of dysfunction that you two are on where like him and Steven are talking about, yeah, like I could see you wanting to hit someone or yelling at them or like, and I'm like, yeah, I think I know what that is. And then Max is like, no. And I was like, okay, well then I'm just like, I had better parents. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. So I think what happens is like on the internet, we're all traumatized and dysfunctional. We're just on a, such a spectrum. So like I always call my dysfunction middle-class dysfunction. I have like middle class immigrant dysfunction. It's very specific, but I feel like like I didn't you know Stephen when he talks about his parents' problems like they're my parents are very different. They're responsible and they are like capable and like my I don't have to bail them out. I just have to take care of them in retirement because that's what Middle Eastern kids do. But Stephen is going home right now to like take care of his parents for making bad financial decisions. I don't have that responsibility, so I don't have that trauma. And then Max like cut his parents out. I can't cut my parents out. I'm Middle Eastern. <laughs> Like, that doesn't happen. We don't yeah. we don't stop talking to our parents. Like that's very weird. So again, I think what happens is like Well, it's weird for him. Is it? it? It's, it's, I think like Oh, he's it, Jewish. Yeah, he, I guess that I, must be weird. Yeah, yeah. So it's but like that's why it's so weird. That's why he's so weird though, I think. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Wait, well, did he have like to be fair, I think it's okay to cut bad bad people out of your life. Does he feel yeah. like that like that, you know what I'm saying? Like if he does he have this like desire to fix it? And maybe that's the problem is like he hasn't let it go. Like he didn't cut them off with like a peaceful. I'm glad I did this. Is that why he's probably upset? I don't know. I don't, um, I don't mean to ask you about him, but the, you know. I, I I know like the other day when I when I mentioned this to him, 
he's said uh, that that he does like miss them like because because mm, i told fair. him like like because i mentioned this like you are disaffected from the parental gaze like I, in other words i said that and uh he said he's not mm. um but that's yeah I, I anything else i could say that'd be really personal i, I can talk about myself but i don't really yeah. know but yeah no, no, that's yeah. fair. Don't, don't, yeah, yeah, that's fair. It's just, it's interesting. So I think ultimately, like when we're observing this, like everyone probably has a spectrum of dysfunction, a spectrum of narcissism, and then whether or not we're engaging with that awareness is kind of the key. I think it'd be very hard to say out loud, oh yeah, because like, again, I'm in the mental health bubble, not that I'm a mental health professional, but like I consume that content constantly. And it's very common for everyone to be like, yeah, of course we have like a spectrum of ego, narcissism, and then blah, blah, blah. But in other circles, like you never want to be called the N-word. Like it's like, I don't even want to be associated. It's like, it was like doing the death panel with Wick. It's like the idea of even being around people who want to unalive themselves is so traumatic to people when that's like my daily life. So I'm like, what are you talking about? We're all just having very different relationships with reality is like kind of my thing. Hence bubbles. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think it, yeah, I don't want to get into it. Okay. I think that if we went into time machine back 50 years, 50 years because we still had some kind of understanding of psychology on some level, um, any person in the modern day in like the fir first world country would be diagnosably NPD, mm. like compared to their standards then. And I think that we the culture has shifted where like because of the way we engage because of social media, because of how we identify within culture itself, I think we are that narcissism narcissism is going up in general. Mm -hmm. And it's not a dysfunction or a disorder because it's the way society is. And I you know, I think a personality disorder generally is is like a personality that doesn't fit into society and like is or interacts with it in a way that people don't like um and also usually trauma and i hate i hate i hate this i hate that you 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 identify so much with um borderline personality disorder because i think that that really just means trauma and i yeah. i think that like all like like the the bpd is like like 50 percent of women are diagnosable as bpd <laughs> and so it's just it's just it's just like i hate it i hate it which which we do because if we would just accept that like we as society are traumatizing women then mm. then we instead of just like saying oh no they're, they're the problem because they have bpd we, we should admit that this is all of our problem mm. well i think we need to start realizing that like bpd is something that happens to you so i think the problem is people think people with bpd are just bpd but like they have to understand that means they had trauma that means the world like either cause them to suffer in such a way they have deregulation or they have like problems with like regulating so that's my dilemma with borderline representation and also people are we discussed it yesterday on my stream lots of therapists will diagnose mpds as borderlines because the mpd won't handle the diagnosis so lots of narcissists are running around here identifying as borderlines and the borderline community community oh my god listen to me is like getting a bad reputation but i i do think like Trauma, it happens to all of us on a spectrum. My version of trauma was enough that it was like eventually infecting my life in such a particular way, which most people's doesn't always have to. Like most people can live their whole life without technically fixing their trauma if they're not introspective, right? Especially if you're not introspective, then you can just go throughout your life thinking like, I'm just like that, I guess. But I needed to fix myself. I needed to be better. I needed to reach goals. And so I needed to do that. So again, like, I think like borderline is really important as a diagnosis for people who are, who need to like fix something and I needed to fix it. It's the same reason why I wonder, because borderline is neurodivergent, but I also wonder like what else? And I have dyslexia. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But I'm like, is there anything else I need to tackle? So sometimes a diagnosis is just really saying, and you're right, by the way, I would need to say this out loud in psychology, and I'm not a therapist, borderline and autism and everything else are just a group of behaviors. We group together and then they call it thing. So that's why with borderline after an affair therapy, you can technically get undiagnosed with it because you're not doing the group of activities. So I, yeah. I see your point. Like, I understand. But if it's got utility, then then absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can I ask about your video? Like, has the person you were talking about in the video, have they reached out to you? No. Okay. Have, would but you I ever? Know, I know. Mm -hmm. So So other people have cut this person out and... Like my like best friend 
still like talks to him sometimes like he cut he, he they cut he cut him out for a long time mm. and now he he talks to him but like in a very like limited capacity where he's got like a lot of boundaries and stuff and i've been told that that's why in the video <laughs> i have uh what's seth up to because i know that that question gets gets posed mm. and uh it really um it, it really freaks me out and makes me uh, really upset that I hear I've and, and I've heard uh, the amount of hatred of me and uh, cause, like way before I'm like making this video or anything. Like I understand if you would hate me after making this video. Like yeah, but yeah, I, like I'm like trying to like move on and like grow as a person, and I'm like thinking about him like and fondly and stuff, and the hatred that like like how much she despises me and like will expect me to like fail and like that we, we we went on a va we went on a vacation and this is the last vacation i like the last time i ever saw him and in the airport i had a like portable electric shaver like and uh we, there was like we were in the wait, waiting for the airplane there was like nobody else there there was like one other person like way far away and i just started shaving with this and then he's like looks at me and i mean i was like this makes me feel cool because it's like a power move or whatever yeah. but he and, and and that's i think plays into it because then he looks at me and he's like he's like horrified he stands up with his fiance and they have to move like across the whole room because it can't be like like be seen near me mm -hmm. and he will still bring that up as like like he like there's like i am i am wrong there's something wrong with me but i think it's just like that i had like some sort of i don't know like dignity or assertion of myself or self-confidence or something but yeah 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 would you ever want to talk to him again uh i i don't think it would be good mm. yeah probably not to be fair but do you want to no not when i hear about how he feels about me yeah like i would want to talk to him because I do care about him and he's like my friend for like a very long period of, like ever since like I was in a sophomore in high school wow and he is like a like big part of my personality is him and and I do care about him but I don't think it'd be good maybe like way down the line Yeah, I can you, see that. You said that you said that Destiny mm -hmm. like um like doesn't mind cutting people like out and like he like tells them like just leave like <clears throat> but that that's what this guy did does too. Um and like he, like people would leave the the groups like the group chat or the Discord or whatever and they they get mad and they'd leave because of something he would do. But he would he would be like I've never banned anyone ever. Uh like it's always them it's always their fault and mm. but he would like he, he'll he'll push you until you leave um because that's going to be good for him in two ways one if you can't like handle it then he doesn't need you and if if you can then now you're more under his thumb mm. and you're putting up with him like domineering you and you know being abusive yeah so okay let me tell you the reason i think this my npd person has a similar pattern he'll like um he'll criticize you and like make it so you're like hey i can't be around you anymore like you're super toxic he's like see everyone leaves me i'm the only person who never leaves steven doesn't do that steven is a good friend he was very considerate to me he was very nice to me in miami he was very like 
thoughtful. He like paid for dinner multiple times. He reaches out. He just, it's shallow. It's not the same. Like he'll reach out. And when he says, Hey, Brittany, how was life? He's not actually asking me to like be vulnerable. He's, he's just like doing the social expectation. So he doesn't know how to be deep with people. And so he's, he's doing, so when he says like, I don't care if you leave. He's not doing it because he's a narcissist. He's doing it because he has abandonment issues and he's avoidant, in my opinion. It's not like he's actually very nice. Though I have no problem with how Stephen treated me as a friend. The bridge burning was mean, but like whatever. Okay, but otherwise, like he was very considerate and nice. He was never like he never made fun of me in private. He never belittled me. He never like made me feel insulted. But my MPD person in my life does that. He like chips at you away slowly. And then when you're with him, he like it. it's different. It's like one is like I'm kind of afraid and I want friends, but I don't know how to be close to people. And one is like like abusive in a way that is so specifically like tied to their narcissism you know what I mean like Steven's just traumatized and like my NPD person is like pathological like he's m maniacal and like malicious and like wants to really hurt people does and it get to you my NPD person oh yeah well <laughs> yeah really? like he the last time I saw him, he triggered the fuck out of me. I was doing so good. I was like really like putting up a fight because I was like, no, I know what this is. And other people were around me watching me do it. And they're like, you're not saying anything. Like he's being so mean to you. And I was like, Shh, I know what he's doing. I know what the, I know the game. <laughs> and then finally it hit me and I got fucking triggered. And I was like, you're being, and I was like, I was so angry at him. And then he goes, you know what you are, Brittany? You're a narcissist. I was like, oh, narcissist, narcissist. Like, That's what they do. And it was like, oh, my NPD person has known me my whole life like I'm very you know I'm very close to them but the last time I saw them was during this big fight it was in November 2019 I'll never forget it and it was like one of the it was very painful because this person is there's a part of them that is so lovely and wonderful they're so smart they're so fucking smart but then they they do this cycle and they misuse and abuse everyone around them and then they go everyone always abandons me but then it's like it's a whole thing right so they found someone to be very codependent with them and it's their partner and their partner is like convinced at this point like no one understands him. Everyone is always mean to him. And she doesn't look at the way he abuses her. He abuses everyone around him. He's hurt like hundreds of people. I got names, receipts, but I love this person. I will love this person until the day I die. They're in my inner circle. They're very important to me. I will, they know, trust me, they're watching my YouTube channel right, me, right now. <laughs> okay. Like we've known each other our whole <laughs> lives. Like they're not going to pretend. That's probably the most, them. the most beautiful and healthy, healthy thing you could do for them is say that. I like, well, they know they are so loved by so many people. They just refuse to accept it. And it is what it is. And like their therapist is like, I think they have borderline. I was like, girl, reassess them, girl. Come on. And like, it is one of those <laughs> things where like, she's like, I can't like, that's the best we can do. And I was like, but you know, it's not the real diet. Like, you know, it's worse than that. Because if it was borderline, DBT would have helped. Something would have helped. CBT would have helped. Maybe Something would have helped. Maybe it's. Okay, maybe it's because you knew them for like such a long period of your life, but I see you as like the most bulletproof person. Like <laughs> you, no, not at, like at, no, as like a streamer. Like probably not in the real life. Like I, I, yeah. I don't, not in real life, but, but as like a streamer, you can, you are, you're like so good at defending yourself. I think and and asserting yourself. You you will in like these panels. Mm. They you will have a, like a presence that you. I don't know. It's it's you just demand people treat you in a certain way, mm. and yeah. Uh, so I'm like this that person must be like really, really, really bad. You know, like that's they're, what I'm thinking. They're uh, mm, it's like it's hard, dude. When they know you so well and you know them so well, they get under my skin. They know exactly how to do it, and I'm like, oh. and like it's really funny because we'll I'll laugh about it. I'm like, oh, you're so good at it. I hate you. And he's just like, he's like, I'm not doing anything. I, you're, I don't know why you're laughing. This isn't very funny. I was like, because <laughs> you're doing it, and like it, it helps that there's other people around, and like we'll, we'll point it out. Like again, I've known this person my whole life. Like I love them so much, but like, oh, what an like what a thing to struggle with. And they knew it even when he was a kid. They saw it. People saw it, but they weren't mental health aware enough to get him help on time. And so I have a lot of empathy and like, like there's, you know what I mean? Like I, I know what it is to love somebody who is so broken, but I also know like I'm open, but I have boundaries. So that's one of the things okay. that I think, you know, is necessary for me is that I have boundaries. Okay. I have a theory. Mm -hmm. I have a theory. Okay. That, okay. That, that is interesting, but I, I'm going down like a path here. Okay. Tell I've me. got like a, like a, wait. so I, maybe it's because you have such a like long-standing relationship with this person and so much closeness 
that um, changes what the relationship looks like. That is, um, because maybe if you were if you had never met this person you're talking about and you were like completely new, I'm pretty sure they would treat you very different, right? And it yeah. would look very different. You wouldn't be able to see the same things, right? Um, it it would be more like hidden. Yes. Um. So, could that be the the case with Destiny? No. Obviously, it could be. I um. You're asking me if I'm like misreading him. I could be right. I I could be wrong. <laughs> okay. So like I could be wrong. I just don't see enough of the same overlap or the feeling I get with people is like Steven doesn't give me this is so woo woo, but he doesn't give me like bad vibes the way that this person does in my life. Cause like this person in my life, when I meet other people that are similar, I'm like, oh, you have the tenants. Steven doesn't have any of the overlapping tenants with my narcissist. So I just can't put him in the same category because neither does Sneeko. Sneeko and Steven remind me so much of each other, but they're in different categories as well. They're mm -hmm. totally different, but they just feel like hurt boys who've never been loved and they don't know how to actually admit they want to be loved. So they trick women and trick people and they don't mean to, but that doesn't feel like the same as a narcissist who never feels loved because they can't give it to themselves. Steve and Sne Steven and Sneeko do love parts of themselves. They know what it is to love parts of themselves. I think my NPD person like does not even understand how to love himself, even an iota versus like- That actually does make sense. So that's why I see the differences Sorry. personally. Yeah. Um, Does your friend yeah. love himself at all? Any part of himself? No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Oh, no, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I don't think, I don't think Steven falls into that and that's, category. That's, that's the thing. Like, so, and I wrote in my like video description, like the way he was like treating, so like he became like a sort of like a mentor and I, I always looked up to him. He's like really smart, really driven, really talented. Um, not as talented as he would like to make you think, but he'll like position himself. So part of the reason he wanted to be like put himself in that position is because he wanted me to care about the things that he's good at. And so then so, but I'm, I'm good at things that he's not, but those don't matter. And they're stupid. Right. The arts are stupid. Right. Uh, I, I told him that I, like we, we had like an argument about like because I, I consider myself like a pretty good writer when I try. And he is like, no, I'm like way better than you. Uh, like and. I'm like, why, like, can I see some of your writing? He's like, no, it's too personal. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I write like, like fiction all the time, and and just it's you'll never mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I was getting at another thing. Uh, I forget what I was getting at. What, what were you saying? Mm, I don't think Stephen is a narcissist. <laughs> I think he doesn't remind me of my no, person yeah, that... with NPD. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He hid. So this guy, the the guy, my my narcissist. Mm -hmm. Um, I put in my video description that I think the way he was treating me was is kind of like how he loves people because he was treating me. He was t t t turning me into a copy of himself. Mm. Um, and to be a copy of him means that you hate yourself and you're miserable. And I mean, but you're you know in control you're 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 talented you're in control mm -hmm. but it's not a good way to be and um i think that steven does that i think that people that aren't like him he like like you like you have to be like him like he you see him different than he sees himself and he can't like have that no no, no. steven's no? upset that i saw part of him that he doesn't want to acknowledge, I think, more than anything. But the part of him that I saw that he needs to acknowledge is that I said the same thing he says. I just literally see it. So when he says, I don't care if my partner cheats on me, I don't care if my partner breaks my consent, I don't care if I break my partner's consent, he says it and I say, yeah, and I'm pro-consent. He'll be like, wait, I'm pro-consent. And I'm like, well, not really, right? Because you're okay with cheating. And then he'll say, wait, that's not how I see myself. I see myself as someone who's pro-consent. And he is. Steven's never going to assault a person. Well, I don't know that, right? But like, I, I think so. But he doesn't understand that cheating is a form of breaking consent. So he doesn't understand why Brittany sees him as someone who breaks consent. I think that's what he means when he's like, how can Brittany see this, like, see me this way? 
you know what I mean? Like the other day, I was like, am I an animal killer? Because I kill bugs. And I was like, Brittany, you eat meat. I was like, that's not the same thing. I was like, am I an animal? Like, I had to see myself differently. Like, that's Stephen doesn't see himself as somebody who's anti, like, who believes in breaking consent. But I have to because he's cheats. And I think it's something like right. that. But like my MPD person, let me tell you what you just said about yours. Same thing with mine. Extremely like mine's really talented and very smart, but doesn't engage. He wanted to be a streamer. He like bought all the same camera gear, asked me for advice, had the whole setup. His wife bought it for him because of course he doesn't work because of course he marries for money anyways. And so he has this whole setup. Never in like 10 years has he ever turned on the camera and he'll for years leading up, we haven't talked in a while, for years leading up to it, he was like, you're a bad streamer. You're never going to make money doing this. You shouldn't even be on the internet. What are you doing? And I literally sat here and accidentally made it my full-time career while he's sitting here like he's always wanted it, but refuses to post a video, refuses to face the world because he knows and he, I know that the moment he does that, people will see it. And he's afraid of being seen. Steven is not afraid of being seen like that. Steven's afraid of being seen vulnerable, like in a vulnerable way, which is why today with Dr. K, he was like, I think you want me to get deeper with you. And Dr. K's like, well, you know, only if you want. And Steven's like, hmm, like it's different. It's like Steven's afraid to be vulnerable. It's not that Steven's afraid of being seen, but it is the same thing. He's afraid of being seen because he doesn't want to be vulnerable, but it's not the same kind as a narcissist. A narcissist. I think you, yeah, yeah. you're. You're winning. You're, you're you're charming me over. Okay, I think I I'm, I'm starting to agree with you. But uh, yeah, yeah. I just think I'm very big on like my my weird neurodivergent thing is like categorization. I'm just like very particular about how we categorize things because I think the nuance makes it feel like everything's the same. But I just know it's it can't be because like that's why the experiences are so different. You know. By the way, are you the painter? Are those your paintings? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Smith, you're so talented. Thank you. My audience is yeah, blowing up the chat I, yeah. right now. And I'm like, wait, is he the painter? You're so good. Well, thank you. It's very impressive. I uh, I want to get back to painting, but is this not worth it? The time commitment to mm. do painting like some of these. Sure. Um, It's like some of these are like every day for like a month. Like that was the main thing I was doing. And like, yeah, yeah. I need to get lucky to find a rich person that wants to launder money through me <laughs> if I want to do that for a career. So true. Yeah, true. Uh, you don't like Dr. Romani. Maybe don't, you don't hate her, but I don't hate her. I used to watch a lot of her. I sent a lot of her videos to like people in my life who are connected to this NBD person. I, I wanted them to feel at ease knowing that it wasn't their fault, quote unquote, that this person was so crazy. But at the same time, um, I found that her fear around narcissists bothered me because again, I'm not afraid of my narcissist. I mean, I have reasons to be, but like, I also am not. I just feel like you don't need to be afraid if you know what's going on. What's of scary is when you don't know what's going on because you can be very charmed very quickly. They can take over your whole life. They can empty out your bank accounts. They can assault or flirt with people they shouldn't be flirting with. Like there's absolutely a line of scary when dealing with NPDs. The dilemma I have is that I'm more of a Dr. Kirkonda fan where like he has helped people with NPD, believes in their recovery, or at least getting somewhat better. Like, again, it's not about curing. It's about helping. And so I think I'm more on that page where I would love my possible NPD person. I would love it if he would get his shit together so we can hang out. Like, I would love it. He's my inner circle. I can't erase him from my life. I can't pretend he doesn't exist. Like, I love him too much. He loves me too much. Like, we're never not going to know who the other person is, even if we don't speak for 20 years. Like, right? We can't We can't do that. Um, and everyone else in his life that loves him, we're all just like, we love you. I wish you weren't fucking sick, you know? But he's an adult and he's allowed to leave the, you know, the family or the the area or the friends or the church or whatever he wants to leave. But it's obviously not for reasonable reasons, right? So I want people to make decisions to leave out of reason, not out of sickness. And that's my hope that psychology and science will get good enough to help people with narcissism, personality disorder, so they can come home for Thanksgiving. You know? Yeah, there's a there's a way you can engage with people like that. That is, but you have to like have the like, boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You have to have very the, the, strong my, boundaries. Yeah. My my narcissist would would kind of like he kind of would know that, but he he would say it like everybody has to be like me, because if it, like if you're not like me, then like it's your fault that like you're hurt. Like you yeah. know, it's you you have to be like this, and uh, I think. I've heard, um, I forget the name of this guy. I don't know who you're talking about, Dr. Kakonda, but 
I, I was listening to Max talk to a narcissist YouTuber. Yeah, the one with the accent. What's his name? Yeah. He's full of fear, yeah, yeah. too. Um, I don't like his work either. Is he? Yeah, I, I haven't watched his work, but... Uh, Oh, but people he, in my audience really talking... like him, but he's too fearful for me too. And every he thinks everyone's gay and he's... everyone fucks their mom. I don't know. I don't think it's weird. He weirds me out. Um, yeah, I he don't weirds like his me work. out in like a tingly way. <laughs> he's like creepy. He's creepy as fuck. Yeah. Um, but like he says that he is like a, a, a like a narcissist sociopath, and um, he, he yeah himself. That would make and... a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. So he's creepy. Okay, yeah. So he's creepy. <laughs> Um, but that, I think that's, that's what makes him a little sexy though. He's like creepy. Yeah. 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 Um, There's something about the owning. That's why Max was so attractive to people. He like seemed to own something. And that's why I think like when people own something, there's something interesting about that. But anyways, keep going. Yeah. Um, he was saying that he was developing like a, a way to like cure people of their narcissism. Mm -hmm. Um, and it would involve like, they would have to experience, um, what is it? Like when your narcissist when your ego collapses or a narcissistic wound. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. They mm -hmm. would have to they would have to go through that. And Oof. then they would have to be be forced to build themselves back up in in like a, a structured, like healthy way. Like Ooh. not in in the way that they're used to. And something along those lines. Um and I, I think that if Max was a narcissist, um, I think that you are the exact type of person that would be able to wound him like that. Yeah, yeah. So you think Max is a narcissist because I couldn't <laughs> wound him? Well, may well, I don't know. I just think I don't know. I just I just see that you could probably maneuver him in his own mm -hmm. language because the thing about him, um, and this might be like. So I don't see him as very particularly uh, scary or or dangerous. Maybe if I was like bigger than him, I would I would actually. Mm. But um, if if I'm not bigger than him, he's he's like very he he gives other people boundaries for them when they need it, and he doesn't. So he's like very harmless. I mean, that might piss you off, but it it, it makes him harmless. Um, but I I he, what he does is to protect himself he takes control over everything. So if you are going he'll criticize himself before you get to do it. He puts mm. everything on the table and he owns it, which is good and interesting in a way, but also it it disarms actual criticism and it and enables him to always, you know, have control over that. Um And this is Max, right? We're talking about So hmm? Are we talking about Max? Yes. Okay, yes. just to clarify. We've been talking about a lot of he's today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And he does that through like I you think that, Yeah, yeah, I think that does like I think that makes sense to me. Keep going. It makes it so that if you have criticism of him, he is able to maneuver himself that it's not your criticism anymore. And uh mm. so he he if he, he he would need like a sparring partner that is like really app at exactly what's going on in the conversation to be able to do that but to be clear like i don't think i could do that right i didn't do that i failed with max you don't? No. no i failed to see him i was well i, I guess i see, see i see him. you too highly then maybe yeah probably take me off that little pedestal you know what i mean like because like i i didn't see i didn't even see steven how did i fuck up so fucking like how did i do that and a big part of it was probably because like I feel like Steven didn't see part of me, but like my audience thought that was so funny because like Brittany's always been talking about people in their relationships. Like I see YouTubers as like reality TV stars. Like I know you're real people, but also I'm going to talk about you and I expect you to talk about me. I just wanted to be like within reason. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know how I messed up there. I don't know how I messed up with Max. I just feel like I can't see. Maybe I can't see something because I feel like if I could see it, then I wouldn't have messed up. Yeah. You think that him, his relationship with Shaylin is probably toxic? Oh, yeah, <laughs> like pretty clearly. But again, lots of toxic <laughs> relationships can become untoxic. So there's a chance they could fix that if they're still together. I don't, I don't know, obviously. But like, yeah, there's always a chance it could get better. But I think it's obviously toxic. What yeah. do you? What makes you say that? 
Um, I mean, so for, for, it probably is, but I'm yeah. just interested. Okay, so first and foremost, I think we're all born into dysfunction and there's always parts of us that aren't functioning, right? And I think a big part of the relationship couldn't function because of the toxicity, the communication style, the lack of seeing, the allow, the like, he didn't allow her, they, they didn't, they never negotiated in a way from what I saw that allowed either of them to get what they needed of the relationship, which should have been a sign to break up, but instead they stay together. And I think couples who often stay together, even though it's clear you should break up, like that's the toxicity. They don't, they don't allow a space where they actually can be themselves. But my theory, this could be wrong, is that with each other, they've been more themselves than they've ever been before. And so it feels like it should work because they've never been able to be themselves so much in a relationship, but it still isn't as much as they could be and be accepted. And if they were as much as they could be, but be accepted or as much as they could be, but get help, then there's something missing in the, like, when I see it, I'm like, oh, it doesn't quite fit. It's like a puzzle piece that almost looks right. Like an emo couple that's like, we love each other because we're so emo together, but then they're not healthy enough to make it bloom into something good. They can only stay in this like place. You know what I'm saying? Like there's something what makes you missing. Think they're, what makes you think that they don't accept each other? Um, from my understanding from the last video, we, the long one we saw where she's crying in the background and there's all of this stuff. They literally the tell orange. us. Yeah. They literally tell us right in that video. And Shaylin's like, I want to do this thing. And Max is like, no. And then Max is like, I want to do this thing. And Shaylin's like, what? And oh, they, you know, it feels like one, they're not. Wasn't on the that like page. a, the, the one where they're like, have, they had sex? Uh, I think so. Yeah. That's a big part of it. Yeah. But like, is the, is no, it, no, was the, it a like, show? The, I mean, no, the, 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 the doll. one where like the, you post. The doll one. Okay, that's a different one. Um, yeah. Um, okay. This is my perspective. Okay. Um, is is interesting because I I I I want your like feedback because I want to be like, um, if I'm fucking like brainwashed or something, you know. So I think that 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 particular video and that conversation is max getting what he needs out of the relationship and it is there's none of that with shaylin at all i think like there, there would have to be an but that, i don't think that means that she he doesn't do that for her too mm. mm -hmm. um but i think that the age gap does probably mean that he gets it more because mm. he is bet, bet probably bet, and he said it himself that he's able to outpace her um too but also i think that the way that he is he will like make sure to like explicitly give her like space to do that on like really really intentionally but also doing that also takes something away from her agency where she has issues with codependency and so him him making sure that she has the space to like to to have that same experience where she's asserting herself in a way that makes him uncomfortable and stuff and um that just him giving that to her on a platter which probably is what's happening would also play into her codependency <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> okay. Hold on. Are you done? Oh, oh, oh am I done? <laughs> Did you finish your thought? <laughs> I just don't want to interrupt yeah. you. Um, okay, so he, maybe this is my bias. I think the reason age gap relationships when the younger person is too young don't work out is for two reasons. The older person doesn't infantilize them and they have something over them, but they are acknowledging it. It's why I don't like Destiny and Melina's age gap relationship. Obviously he like age, he's an ageist towards her. Like he demeans her. He caught, he blames her age on a lot of the problems. Um, Max is like, Oh, I can do this thing to my partner. Cause I'm older. If your partner is your, your partner should be your peer and should be someone you equally respect as much as yourself. And should be someone you, you want the best for. And I think if you're in a relationship where you're looking down on your partner or claiming like I'm smarter than them, I could take advantage of them I can manipulate them because they're young like that you're telling on yourself right you're like telling on yourself and I think that's the but problem that's his thing yeah like right so he's told us so now <laughs> we can't hold him accountable like fine okay he can't hold himself I get, but I that's get. where I see the toxicity come in like I would never what if I came on stream yeah. and I was like my partner is so silly he's just a stupid little boy and I am so like it's just like why do we why are we talking about our partners this way like my partner is a capable adult who consented to marrying me and has decided to do a life with me and I respect him and I trust him to make good decisions yeah. like I trust myself to make good decisions that's why I I've been it. having this conversation in thinking about this conversation. I had this conversation with myself. What she, what has to, what he needs to 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 fucking have something to to hold against this criticism, <clears throat> which is completely valid criticism. He needs because he keeps like joking that one day like 
<laughs> Shailen's going to write an article about him. And she, she needs to fucking write that. That would be the best thing that, at least for, for, for you and me, that would be the <laughs> best thing optically for him. Mm -hmm. uh, if she did that, but... Mm. Yeah, like she needs to like make a video where I mean, I guess in if in this context it would be in service of him and not of herself. But if she were to make like a video like that doll review, but like for her, it would it would really make things look a lot better, I think. Well, and I think that's the problem is like not to be such a mom to everybody, but I kind of feel like when I see people doing the like, oh, it's fine because look, I'm figuring it out. I just feel like I'm watching people in the same way like a parent would, which is like, ah, you're fucking up. But you know what? We're all going to fuck up. So it's OK. Like Shailene could come out and talk about how wonderful her relationship was with Max. She could write like the most wonderful article in his honor. And I would still be like, no, I'm saying the opposite. Oh, the opposite. No, 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 like no, she'd no. come I'm out. Saying, I'm saying I'm saying, you know, I'm saying that she should like like ruthlessly like 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 do like com like per like be completely brutal and oh, like, on and honest about yeah I that see. that that's what would make it look good because that would mean that it's like level you know oh i see like She's okay but don't you think people okay this is my belief i think people can consent to abuse like to an extent some people some people caveat yeah. so i think like i look at shaylin as somebody who consents i remember being so upset over this in my discord i remember talking about it as high as a cloud and I remember being like fuck Shaylin and fuck Max because if they're gonna be so toxic together they deserve each other and there's a part of me that believes that and there's a part of me that's like hey I hope you guys like feel better and stop hurting each other and like get some help you know because I want the best for you like I want the best for everyone but I do think Shaylin does consent to that relationship and she has the right to as a grown-up just like Melina has the right to consent to a relationship where her partner is like not gonna be committed to her and like I think that's fine like I think you're allowed to do that that's why like when women come to me and they're like oh Sneeko hurt my feelings I was like stop fucking with Sneeko oh my god how many women does he have to fuck over for people to understand this but the problem is they think i'm the one i'm gonna change him i'm special he's told me that i'm the only one who can fix him and so the cycle continues that's why i think everyone's dysfunctional and everyone has abuse it's just a matter of the spectrum how toxic and abusive do you want to be i can be toxic right and i can be dysfunctional my partner and i well, age know, like mm -hmm. age uh, i age gap relationships have that um like cost benefit where mm. like being with someone older is good for you in a lot of ways too yeah obviously they're and like more established hopefully too. they like yeah. are comforting they know what they're doing yeah obviously like totally 100 percent. there's like a lot of benefits to that that's what i'm saying like people are allowed to consent again for me it's like harm reduction so when i look at a relationship on whether or not it's good or bad it's like oh, is there more good that outweighs the bad and like is there a large enough gap between these two things you don't want to be like oh it's all good but it's basically almost bad it's like you want to make sure that the gap is like pretty big and again this is somebody who's older i've gone through therapy i've gotten better i've like moved to dysfunctional relationships out of my life so i am speaking from a place of i've already done dysfunctional and it didn't work for me. And so I cut it out and I'm like now at this stage in life. So I don't need everyone to be where I'm at, but I'm just saying it's possible not to be there. You know, like destiny will hear me say things like, or Stephen will hear me say things like my partner's perfect for me. I'm not saying he's a hundred percent perfect. I'm saying he's perfect for me, Brittany, the consciousness, and we're compatible at a very high rate, but we don't have the same hobbies. We don't have the same interests because they're not important to us. We're perfect for each other because we share the same values. And for us, like that's why that's why you're bulletproof. Wow. Because you can be a hip. Be, no, because you're you're honest enough that it that calling you a hypocrite doesn't mean anything. Yeah, well, uh, to be fair, I also think life is like tiny contradictions. But I think like there's again there's this thing that I don't think people are understanding when I talk. Like I'm always talking about values. My partner and I don't give a fuck about hobbies because that's not part of our values. But for Stephen, when he often talks about that, he's like, "Well, Brittany's partner can't be perfect because like what if they have different hobbies?" And I'm like, "This hobby is part of my values. Like who cares? Like he is he plays D and D. Do I play D and D? <laughs> no, no." never yeah, i don't never. i don't get that i don't get that like it's not for me either like people say that you should like find a partner that has like similar hobbies it's like the, the one hobby you're gonna have in common is sex and okay. like so you got that one if your you know? hobby <laughs> is like lifestyle so if my we're both hermits his parents came over the other day and they're like do you want to travel do you want to see croatia because i live here now and i was like oh yeah eventually but like i don't leave the house really and they're like but don't you want to see europe i was like yeah eventually give me like six months to a year and they're like and they're like, okay, just as long as you're happy. Like, people have to understand, like, we don't have hobbies that take us out of the house. Like, he doesn't have a hobby that takes it. Like, if we had – if he was a skier, which he did as a child, and he did that every weekend, that might cause a rift in the relationship. But we are so compatible mm -hmm. because we have the same values and lifestyle. It's it's very specific. I chose him 
So I would have to change very little. <laughs> and he chose me. So we would have to change very little because we're already grown and we already know what we're doing in life. So our lives just match up perfectly. Most people aren't doing that though, Smith. They're dating people that are very opposite. They're living completely different lives and they're asking them to morph themselves to them. They're saying, hey, I know you've been doing this whole thing independent of me, but can you come be with me? And then the partner who's more dominant tends to be the person who gets their way. But eventually the person who didn't get what they wanted, it will erode in the relationship. There will be resentment. There will be like... Why there yeah. will be fights over and over again. So again, I and we fetishize it too. And I fetishize it too, because like, I, I, I kind of relate to women in a lot of ways, uh, as, as especially being like, I, I wanted to be a woman. That's how much. Mm. And, um, I, I used to be so jealous of that. And I think I, I mentioned this to you, like the first time I talked to you like a year ago, um, oh my God, that, it been that long? women get to have, yeah, I think so. Wow women women get to have that benefit of like the age gap like it's it's a lot harder to find like that kind of relationship like as a guy but women uh often and the fact that they rely on this is bad but uh, a lot of women will rely on that age gap relationship to help them like progress in their early 20s and stuff yeah. but that also takes a lot away because they're molding themselves into what what the man wants so yeah 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 it's it's interesting would you is, um would would you want to see more age gap relationships where the men are younger? Where where the men are younger? Yeah, like do you are you like are you like hesitant to like are you saying I'm just curious like separate from that thought like age gap relationships in general are you are do you think it could benefit men to be in a relationship with an older woman? Yeah, I think like to, to, as much as it can benefit a woman and it would have drawbacks. And I think that it's bad for the standard to be one way, because yeah. I think that the the standard being that a uh, men date younger women um, makes it so that women as like a standard are molding themselves into what we see a woman as is what a woman wa a man wants a woman to be because that's they, they that they've so often turned themselves into what a man wants a woman to be mm -hmm. so i think that i think it would be honestly it, it it would give us a vision to have more relationships like that of what women want men to be like we don't even know what that even looks like well no one believes it, us. that's how no one believes right. us either like because some of us women like again like I think women are changing and saying we want men who are more in tune with their feelings and more sensitive. And men are like, no, 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 that can't be it. And I'm like, <laughs> as women make well, yeah, more money, that is what we're going to need, right? Well, well, it depends like what women is saying that because hmm. um, and, and it's it's a cyclical problem, okay? Because that, that lack of trust, me, like also, like if you are a woman that was molded partly by a man and like, like be whoever you want. I mean, there's, I, I wish I was that man. I wish I was the man that was molded by a woman. Okay. Cause it would have given me benefits in life. Okay. But, um, if you are that woman, then if you are saying what women want men to look like, your perspective is tainted in that way. And so mm -hmm. if, if men see women as that, as a, re, as a product of their own desires, then for a woman to then say what, what, a, what an ideal man is, is like, yeah, but you don't even know. And, it's it's hard to like know for sure so i think if we had more relationships where the men were younger we would like that would be like we could just look at it objectively mm. third party not like connected and be like this is what a woman yeah. wants a man to be like i think you said it earlier in the stream and i do want to offer it up as an also another thought is like depending on the bubble you will have women who won't who will who will punish men for being emotional but say like they want it emotional out of their men or like women will be like icked out by certain kinds of guys it is a it is a conundrum because i'll watch like a fresh and fit bubble and that's like very different where the women are like ew he's bisexual no and i'm like <laughs> yeah oh man that's so upsetting it's so but, like it's it's, it's very like heteros like and i'm in the queer bubble and like i'm in the queer circles and like it's very different like gender what is gender and like what is like everything's just like whatever like I'm a very like everything is a construct like that's where I live is like everything is a construct bubble so for me when I see people are like I could never date a bisexual guy I'm like weird construct to choose bro like where'd you get that from yeah. and then I, I get it what does but, it like, have to do with yeah, you I, <laughs> you know I well insecurity fear I'm afraid he'll leave me for a man I'm afraid I won't be good enough I'm afraid you know, it's a fear. I think it's also status or something. Mm. Like, it's like a bisexual man is just like a, it means you're settled or something somehow. Yeah. 
Those, yeah, I those women, I hate that because it means ah, to me, it means that, that a woman that says that means that she is so out of touch with because because so I, what I look for in women, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. This is my theory of like female sexuality. I look for women that like really like uh, gay porn ah. or like because because I want women that like know that they're attracted to men and like are very in touch with that because I like to feel desired. Yeah. So if a woman is like if he's gay like the thought of me being with a guy doesn't fucking turn you on what like yeah, yeah. come on <laughs> <laughs> flip it <laughs> put it on twitter that's a that's a pretty good tagline right there no no no. i think that's i think that's really actually good um like one of the things i did when i was courting my now my now partner my now husband is i was like let's exchange porn what do we watch like what are you into and i was really yeah, excited like to that. see like not only did we have things in common and like there was definitely a vibe but like i looked like some of those the those people he was looking at so i was like oh fun like there was something really optimistic about it like it was so nice but then i i think again it's about sharing like why are we into these things and what are we experiencing and a lot of heterosexual women that i don't involve myself with often right i have a couple friends that are straight but like they're very different like everything they do is different the way they date is different it's very interesting to me like it's very it's just fascinating like i can't even like explain to people how different it is compared to the queer women or pansexual women i'm with because like i'm pansexual my friends are mostly queer like we're just we're dating totally different. We want totally different requirements out of our men. I don't I don't even see it like that. Like mm. as I just see the way you're describing like the way you are as like being different from heterosexual. I just think that you're just smarter. I mean, like, and, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't know if it's smarter, right? Like I think it's just um I I fought my whole life, hence the borderline. Like my therapist thinks my borderline is because I was rejected as a gay kid growing up. I fought so hard to be like queer and to be allowed to date anybody and to be allowed to love anybody that I think to take that away from somebody else would be so strange for me. So I probably like, it's probably a part of that too. Like I'm just more accepting and I try, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but I just, I don't know. I don't think anybody is straight. I think some people are straight. Some. I think most people are bisexual, pansexual, but some people are straight and gay. I think some people are straight and some people are gay. I'm more of a Kinsley scale kind of girl. And I think like there's a whole bunch of people in the middle. I th I think that um this is controversial. Okay, but I don't I don't see why. It's controversial because we've had to stake out like extreme positions. I, I don't think anybody's born gay. Do I don't think there's anything, but like that, the reason I know you squint your eyes because people that say that usually are saying that because they want to dismiss being gay as a legitimate thing. Oh, but I don't sure. know. I think you're gay. You are, you are gay if you're gay, but I don't think that our like sexuality sort of like develops and stuff. And I think that you could be straight, like, like by any definition of the word and then suddenly become in touch with your gayness. Like you yeah. could, you could unlock that later in life yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it's not because you were born to be it. I think it's fluid. It, it's yeah. Well, the question is like, are you gay because you do gay things? And so, f from my lived experience, being in especially in Seattle, where everyone's very comfortable with themselves, and we're all going like skinny dipping and nude parties and BDSM. A lot of straight guys will make out with other guys, but they're definitely straight. A lot of straight girls will make out with girls. We'll even eat box, and they're still straight. And my theory on straightness is like, who are you going to live your life with? Like, are you willing to marry a man or a woman? But that could be wrong of me. I should maybe say like, there's orientation and then there's like sexuality, which is like some people have been doing that. Like I'm bi-romantic, but by bi 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 pansexual or I'm bi-romantic and like hetero romantic. Like maybe that's a better way to look at it. I don't I think, I don't think you're wrong. It's just how you see it. Yeah, for sure. You're, you're, you, you can't, you, you can't do that to yourself. You can't both say that, that you, you, this is how I see it, but also I might be like wrong, but like, it's just your values. I don't think that they're like, you're, you're discrediting yourself, you know, well, no, no, it's no, no. just I'm, how I'm, you feel. I'm trying to categorize correctly though. Cause there is, a, I think there's an objective T truth to the universe. I just don't think we have access to it as much as we think we do. And then there's like little T truths, which are those subjective truths, which I do validate like in myself, but then there's like objective truth. And I'm like, is there a thing called straight? Like, is this a thing? Is straight in action? Like there's one part of my brain that's being curious about the actual objective and a part of my brain that's actually exploring the subjective okay i don't believe it I, okay then then you that's why i'm saying that because i don't believe that that objective thing happens i think that we're mm. all just like it, our, our sexuality is like a a chaotic reflection of our experiences like i could be like physically gay mm -hmm. but like the thought of being like emotionally like gay like like so like i could like jerk off to gay porn but sure. if i start to think about the guy as like like a human 
the way I do when I jerk off to like to women, um, then it's like different. And um, I think that the, if I had experiences, or I could think I could try to have experiences if I wanted to, where I where I sort of become in touch with that. And and if I had experiences maybe in my childhood where I related to a man in a more intimate way or something like that, it could could have happened in that way. Yeah, I think that's the problem is I think that's okay. When I say introspection and I say you have to know yourself, it's very hard to ask yourself a billion times over, am I into women because of this? Am I into men because of this? Am I into people? Like I recently had a conversation with my partner where he was like, why do you keep saying you're bisexual when you're obviously pansexual? I was like, I'm not pansexual. I'm bisexual. He goes, you're literally pansexual. You've been with non-binary people. You'll date people who are gender fluid. I was like, oh, I'm not politically. I don't like the politics, but you're right. Like, I don't care what people's gender is. I care what the consciousness is. But when you identify as like pansexual, it insinuates that I like non-binary political people and I don't. I don't find them attractive, but it's their politics that are unattractive, not their gender. So I realized like even I was misidentifying myself because of the way that the word was associated with politics. Like I'm a feminist in spirit, not in politics. So like philosophy wise, I agree with feminist philosophy, but I don't agree with feminist politics because I think they lose sight of things so it's like when you're identifying when I'm getting to know myself I want it to be as accurate as possible so I actually think there are words and terminologies and bubbles we can put these things into but all of them are a construct so all of them aren't real but they are real because they're put into a construct and then there's like an objective reality that I think exists outside of my or your consciousness and our ability to have a relationship with it so I think that's also why you're bulletproof what you're, you're doing now and you do it all the time <laughs> Is Stop, that you're going to you make will... me so... I'm going to become a narcissist in this stream. <laughs> no, you actually think... I, I, this is like a criticism, though. Okay, uh, like, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. I, I, when I, I, I think that you will give other people so much room where you will... Like, I, I believe that my experience is an objective, like, fact. of okay. Like, so... Like my feelings are objectively my feelings or my way I define something is objectively my definition. Mm. And I don't think you need to like preface everything. Uh, but like uh, some other people do need that. And you are very giving in that way where you do all this work for like the uh, for the other people so that they can be ready to receive what you have to say. And I think that that's what makes you bulletproof in that way. But I think that it also might come at a cost to you. I don't know how you how you can survive that. Like, how does that not chip away at you? We're giving so much room to people before you even give yourself room. Mm -mm. That's where you're wrong. I give myself the most room. I'm the most important, like important person on this whole planet. I take care of myself first and foremost. But I had to learn how to do that, to be fair. Like even my partner and I, I'm my favorite person. And then it's him and he's his favorite person. And then it's me. And then we're each other's favorite person. <laughs> does that make sense? Like I give myself all the room and then I give myself to people when I can. So like I'm open, but I have boundaries. And those boundaries are I'm just rooted... saying when you're explaining. Well, Sorry. I'm, I'm uh... here to make content to help people go on an introspective journey if they want to. So I have to meet them where they're at. So it's kind of like proving my work also by giving people that space, right? Yeah. I just think it it, it could I, I can't I can't imagine doing that to the extent that you cuz that's like your like the biggest skill I think in your your like content in my opinion. And I, I can't imagine doing that all the time without it like like chipping away at my own. Maybe they, maybe that's because of my experiences like about that video. Like I'm, I'm I have trouble like my I've done a lot of work to differentiate myself from people like and not like com become enmeshed in a conversation. So you just have that differentiation naturally. You're. Maybe I'm losing you. Are you saying, because like when I talk to you, I'm thinking, my brain goes, okay, jump into Smith bubble and what's he doing and how does he feel and what's his language and like, how do I make Smith feel like I see him and hear him and make sure that I do. Is that what you mean? Right. I'm not. Yeah. So if I were to do that, um, if I were to do that, I, I would become you more than I want to. Oh, fair. that's why I, this is why I relate to Max a lot. Um, I, I, I think that he has a lot of boundaries because he has that, that vulnerability where he will like become the other person like way more. Like, I think that's why he had to cut off his parents. Mm. And so, the, so for me, 
And I, I think for him, the conversation is less the way you described it. And it's more like, I'm trying to defend myself from you to, to be able to, to survive the conversation. Yeah. I'm like I'm clinging to myself. I'm putting my hand in, into your bubble and I'm, I'm clinging hard desperately to myself. I mean, it gets, it's getting easier and easier for me and I'm more confident with that, but that's just like my, my uh, pr like feeling and perspective. Yeah. I wonder how much of it relates to like borderline. Cause borderlines, we have a lot of um, issue with like, we mirror each other. Like my mom used to say, Brittany, you'd come home uh, talking like all your friends, like where's Brittany. And I'm like, Oh, Brittany's like a collection of everyone she meets, but also there is a core me. And I think my introspective journey was about finding that core person because I do hop into people's bubbles a lot and I'll come home talking like them. I have callers that have accents and by the halfway through the call, I'll be talking like them and then we'll laugh about it because like I, I tend to pick up on what people are doing. And so I will say a part of that is just like mirroring and also you don't want to lose yourself in the conversation. So what I have to do is remember that like there is a Britney here. The problem is, is like um, most people who come to me don't actually want Britney, right? They want to talk about themselves through Britney. So it makes no sense to make it about me um, unless we're having a more intimate relationship or friendship. So I'm fine with it. Cause like, I feel like that's why I'm good at my job is like, I don't care about making it about me. I Even really want to see someone be your Britney. <laughs> I want to see what that looks I, like. Okay. That's funny you say that. Cause I think, I think Dr. K could do it maybe, which is sort of ironic. I think he could do it. I don't know. It's quite vulnerable. But nobody ever, people talk about it. Like one time Steven on stream was like, oh, I'll, okay, I'll ask you questions. I'll get to know you. But like nobody ever does, right? Like nobody really wants to know because even when they ask me stuff, they'll always frame everything through things I've talked about. They're not, it, I think because I'm so blunt, people have a really hard time seeing me outside of my work. Like my work is my personality, right? Like on the internet. And I think my viewers get me better because they watch me a long time. But even Kyla, when she reviewed my levels, she goes, oh, this is like probably inspired by your borderline. And I was like, what does that have to do with anything? And so like, that's interesting to me because I'm like, if people only see you through the lens of like, it, it's hard. I don't think, I don't think I'm interesting enough for people to care about it. And also fair. <laughs> like, I think my work is much more interesting than me. You know what I mean? Right. But that maybe that plays into it. Maybe you are running and you need someone that's really good at chasing you. Maybe you are putting you you are you are putting up all these are all these you are prefacing the things you say and you're 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 asserting your understanding of someone else so that you can you can be that mirror and you um, mirroring people and doing that. Maybe that is like you're escaping and you're actually getting further away. Yeah, probably. I'm probably keeping like a nice distance on purpose, right? I'm trying not to be too vulnerable. Uh, I also feel pretty fulfilled by like, well, obviously I'm like here as like a professional and I'm here as like a not like a YouTuber, like just like a person. And I'm trying not to be too vulnerable, obviously. And sometimes I am more vulnerable, but like think with my partner or with like my siblings or my inner circle, like those are the people who get like my most vulnerable. I just don't see why the internet deserves it, which is why I've hesitated talking to Dr. K because he has a tendency to be a little too vulnerable with people. And I'm like, eh, like, I don't know if I really want to go there with him. But then sometimes I think like I have an interesting story and I wish somebody was interested in it, but then maybe it's not that interesting and that's why nobody cares. So I'm like, ah, oh, forget it. My work's more fun. You know what I mean? So it's hard to know, like, when do you want to be the center of attention? I think, again, my work is much more interesting than me unless – you know, because it's not you're right. I think I put up walls so people wouldn't even get to see the most interesting part of me. So I don't even think I'm able to do it. Maybe. Maybe I yeah. would. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be able to display it for strangers on the Internet. <laughs> I don't know. I I think that you. I, everybody's interesting. Yeah, I think. Well, you I just think gotta, most people you just are gotta, interesting. Gotta, you just got to say it in an interesting way. You if you if you if you like say like your truth into a video camera mm -hmm. and then you spend a month editing it then you could make it interesting <laughs> you could make it an interesting video about how you feel about tying your shoes in the morning yeah that's true your video was really good i actually really appreciated your video a lot of people were like why is his face so close to the camera i was like no no no, it's a vibe but like i get it like i did i couldn't get that close to a camera but i love when people do that i think it's so interesting thank you mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like the way you filmed that. Everything and like you scraping off the chair and then getting to the point in the video where you were like, it's never what's on top because everyone's been sitting down. It's like, what's on the bottom? Oh, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was waiting for that chair to make sense. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was a really good video.
I'm trying to I'm trying to talk about you right now. Mm. I know, but I want to switch it. You know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't. I guess I, I'm. I can't do that. Yeah, I don't know who it's gonna be. I've been like secretly, my partner and I talk about this all the time. I was like, I think I've been looking for somebody who could bounce ideas off of me in a way that would make me feel seen. I think it's, it could be also, there's, do you know who John Verveke is? Professor John Verveke. He's a philosophy professor. I don't. He did Smith. He did the meaning crisis and it's so good. And I was like, is Verveke someone I could talk to? But he's so smart. Like, I feel like I'd be so dumb next to him. But like, also, I think he to get me. I just want somebody who wants to explore the ideas of what I've been working on with me in a way that like, they actually get it. But everyone like I talk to, they almost get it, but then they don't get it. And they make it about them. Them, which is not about either of us it's about but then see that's turn, my work is a part of me so maybe that's it if people can understand my work maybe they'd be able to understand me better I think some people do I think some people in my audience get it a little bit but they still sep like it's very intimate this this thing you want from me but also it sounds exciting to uh, me but also uh, I don't know I don't know if like I, I feel like you don't necessarily want me to 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 do that, but um, I, when I say I want it, I'm just interested. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But but also, I think it would be I don't know. Like I just I just I maybe I'm I'm, I'm trying to unpack my want here because that 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 word like straight like why would I want that? Mm. Uh, so maybe it's because I think that you are like hurting yourself a little bit because mm. that's what i said before i feel like that would hurt me to some extent like maybe you're like pushing yourself down and so like maybe that would be good maybe maybe what it would come out would be like like a, a big explosion like a you know like a, a big powerful like really provocative thing yeah maybe maybe i don't think so though i think people are pretty uh not interested <laughs> like i just think people want to do different things and I think the work I engage with is for like a niche community and I should probably just be chilling in that energy. Like I'm not a filmmaker. I can't make a film. Like I can't, I'm not a YouTuber like that. You know what I mean? So I, I think like, um, I think I'm communicating in my best way and the right people will hear it and the cool people will chill, but like, you know, and then the people who don't get it, don't get it. But I just, I don't think I'm denying myself anything more because I am open and curious but I think I'm being wise with how I engage with it versus in the past, I think I've been less wise. So maybe it's that. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to be more wise. And I don't think I'm a wise person. I'm pretty sure I'll die an unwise person, you know. Your camera just got, like, Pixelated? Buggy. Did it get weird? Yeah. Yeah, had, yeah, yeah. I had a guest on and they kept – I had Kidology on and that kept happening to her camera. Am I back? Yep, you're back. Okay, good. Yeah, that kept happening to Kidology when she was on. It was insane. But okay, let me know I've if it seen happens it happen again. before. Yeah, yeah, let me know if it happens again. Now, I'm curious, um, moving away from me and back to your narcissism video, and <laughs> do you really feel shifted on like Steven possibly being a narcissist? Like, do you feel like that is a miscategorization of him possibly? So for him to be a narcissist, I think it would mean that in the way that I was sort of seeing him is like he is like filled with all that shame and like self-loathing. And then projecting that onto others, mm -hmm. but maybe, I don't, maybe that that makes a sense that he doesn't have that. Maybe, um, but what what is what is there then? Like, I don't like. If if I don't see him like that, then the way I see him is very cold. Well, he has a different form of trauma that he's dealing with, right? I don't. He has like. I'm not saying like. Yeah. I, I'm not like. What I'm saying is just, for, like me, my 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 objective, biased for like I, I like if if I'm not seeing him like, like as wounded in that, way where he is projecting it onto other people. Hmm. I mean, I can see him not like that, but then I'm like, then I'm seeing him as a lot less warm here's my theory with steven is he steven is like dr house okay they like pretend that they're like and dr house is a narcissist to be fair but like you know like steven, <laughs> bad example but like they play this game of like he plays this game of like i don't care about people's feelings 
I wasn't even hurt, which is why when he burned the bridge with me, people were like, why are you mad at her? Like, you, you have to tell her you have feelings. He's like, of course I have feelings. And the mistake is like, it could be a narcissistic rage. It could be MPD rage where he's like, I, of course I have feelings, even though I've been, you know, but that's not what Steven's doing. I think Steven finally, maybe I did, maybe I warmed something in him where he was like, maybe I could be somebody with feelings, but like he always had feelings. <laughs> he just didn't know how to interact with them. But I feel like it is a more avoidant personality than NPD. I just think they play out differently. Like I said, Steven was really good to me in the friendship. He never like belittled me. He never made me feel um, like psychologically abused. We talked for very little, like I think like five hours total in private, but like in public, we talked a lot. You know, I saw him once in Miami. You know, we talked. I, I, I did never got an energy from him that he was like, not not projecting, but it wasn't the same. Like, it's more like he doesn't know how to engage. Like, he's just getting on medication for his ADHD, right? That means he's just having a relationship where, with himself where he's like, maybe I need medication. But even today, he told Dr. K it's for the efficiency of being a better employee, basically. And Dr. K's like, well, what if it's not about the world? What does Steven need? Like, he doesn't even know how to, like, take care of himself because no one took care of him growing up, right? A narcissist even if when they're really well taken care of, it's not enough. I think if Steven could take care of himself, he'd be really, really good to go. But a narcissist struggles to even take care of themselves. Steven has a much greater chance of being able to do that. But he has to stop playing the sociopath game. Oh, I'm a sociopath. I don't have feelings. <gasps> Brittany hurt my feelings. I had to burn the bridge. Which one is it, bro? Which one is it, bro? The narcissist obviously has hurt feelings, but they lash out. He didn't lash out at me like a narcissist. He lashed out at me like a child. But isn't that what the narcissist is? They're like a child? A different kind of child. There are different kinds of children that lash out. It's a, it's a, it's a tantrum, but they're two different kinds of tantrums. And I just want to, I don't know, how do I specify the differences? Like, it's the reason it's extra hard is because the person that I'm taught like, in, in that my my and my narcissist was very able to take care of himself to the and he would take care of everyone around him and like to be controlling of them. Yeah. And like it, 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 he his he he knew that um he he was like a narcissist that knew that he could have power by ha like he needed to have power to wield it um to to get his his um to get his supply. He told me once uh, that he's like really upset with uh, or, or, or constantly very aware of and ashamed in a way, uh, weirdly ashamed in a way of how much he cared about his father's um, judgment of him or like impressing his, uh, his, his father's uh, approval. Hmm. Um, and that like bothered him. He's like, this, it's just, it's, it's not right that, you know, it's, it's not good that I feel like I need his approval so much. Hmm. And yeah, I, I just see that like, it's so similar. It, it's so similar to me. I could be wrong. Like, right. Uh, what do you think of Trump? Like, do you think Trump's a narcissist or just high on the narcissism scale? I can't tell with Trump, honestly, I think he's probably a narcissist, but like the way he presents himself, but, um, I, I, I get like little glimmers though of behind the scenes once in a while mm -hmm. and it seems different like um I, I was watching him like sign a tractor and uh he like had this like grand like signature it was pretty cool <laughs> and uh the guy's like oh he's and he's like see uh no no you know biden could never do that and uh and uh th but then like that then the, that was for the photo shoot yeah and then the camera was moving away and he goes over to the tractor guy and is like asking him like random like like weird little question about the tractor because he's just curious and you know i don't think we ever like see trump like in a normal like way like that so i don't really know yeah yeah it's hard to say with him i go back and forth because people are always like he's a narcissist I was like, he's definitely high in the narcissism scale but i don't know if he's npd like literally I mean, he could be, I bet his kids would be more likely to be NPD, honestly, just because of the way they were raised with the family dynamic. And so again, I want to give a lot of like empathy and sympathy to the people who are struggling with any kind of illness in relation to this. I just think like, it's, it's hard to know, but again, maybe I'm biased because I've, again, there are so many things that Steven does that to me, like fit a different diagnosis and like match up much more with ADHD and avoidant and like the way he was raised versus like an MPD diagnosis, which is very rare, by the way. So like, I don't want to like, I can't assume that of him. But like, I also, 
I wouldn't bet money on it just because it doesn't fit the like what I've read about narcissists. It doesn't quite fit. It almost it fits if you twist it, but it doesn't fit perfectly from what I know about him and what I've experienced with him. Does that make sense? Like it fits if you twist yes, it. Yes, absolutely. But it doesn't fit. It doesn't. It's not satisfying to my problem solving puzzle brain. I'm like I'm not satisfied. It feels like we're t we're fitting it in, but it's not. It's 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 different, but it's there, but it's different. Like, where does a lack of introspection uh, it, come in, right? This is like, I wish that uh, Destiny would take on one of Mr. Girl's uh, tools. Um, and just like, it, like a criticism like that, he can like own it and explore it. And that becomes mm. his content. And, and like, and, and it's that, that, that'd be interesting. And it would be like useful to people in a certain way. But instead, he needs to like reject it, um, like, like completely. Um, and, and it's just like, no, that's interesting. No, 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 no. Like, that, that's like, like I want to like I want to hear what you have to say about that like mm. genuinely you know what I mean Yeah I think um when you know when you're dealing with people who can't face parts of themselves you're really just dealing with like a person who's maybe not ready or on a different part of the journey or like they like introspection or they don't want to do the work. It's too hard. I think the narcissist, Dr. K said it today, very interestingly, he was describing a person who's like introspective, but can't do anything about it. And sometimes I think narcissists are actually very introspective, but they can't do anything about it versus like somebody who's like in denial completely and hasn't gone down that introspection journey enough to actually like see their pro i think a narcissist sees that they're the problem but denies it yeah i don't think destiny even knows he's the problem yeah Genuinely. narcissists know yeah the, i think in, a narcissist in, in, knows guy, i'm talking about my guy knows too my npd he knows yeah I, I i was his therapist basically we had these really like like hours and hours and hours talking about his work life and everything and he would he'd be like you know like there's something wrong with me you know like people yeah. like that's not normal that people keep leaving my life like this it's something mm. wrong. and it really breaks my heart um yeah it does yeah it is it's very sad and again like again see how the things match up like steven like burns his bridges he doesn't burn his bridge a narcissist i feel like would have the conversation with me mm. steven's decision to block me and not give me a chance to explain myself especially in private as his friend is avoidant behavior it's not narcissistic a narcissist would be like yes Brittany, tell me tell me how you would do this to me Brittany. Tell me, tell me, Brittany. Like a narcissist would want to yeah. know because they're so consumed. Max Steven, would want to know. He would, <laughs> like my MPD would want to know, right? Explain it, explain it. But Steven doesn't do that. I think he just got hurt and he feels betrayed by me as his friend and I feel confused by him mostly. And he won't talk to me about it because he's afraid that the conversation will make him introspect in a way he doesn't want to versus a narcissist was never going to introspect in the first place. They just want to hear me talk about them. So I just don't think he's a narcissist. But you really think... You really think it's because he doesn't want to introspect um, and it's not because he doesn't want to be painted in a certain way? Yes, because it, he paints him. He agrees with my assessment of him. He already went on stream. He's like, well, Brittany's technically right that I I do have like kind of a dysfunctional relationship. And then he'll be like, Brittany's technically right. I do cheat on my partner. And like, Brittany is technically right. So like, he'll admit that my assessment was correct. He just, he paints himself that way. And so the problem is like he doesn't want to see himself enough to be okay with the fact that I'm friends with him and I still see him this way because like he forgets that I'm – I have friends that are very diverse for me. So my best friends are cheaters. It's just like who cares? Like I care but I don't maybe, care that much. Okay. I think – okay. Maybe this is why you like have a lot of negative feelings towards Max too because when I saw that happen, I was I, – I, my feeling – and maybe, I'm, this is completely – like third party like fucking, I, I don't fucking know but my feeling was that max hurt destiny in that way and destiny was seeing that signs of that with you yeah. and he's like he yeah a lot of people felt that and way that a lot made... of people said that like you know which is kind of embarrassing because then well okay so if steven admits that I'm not max and that I'm just myself and I'm blunt and he just didn't know that about me for some reason because he just watched my content that's fine and then he would have to admit that he threw a tantrum on stream. And then he'd have to admit that he burned the bridge without thinking. And then he would have to admit that Brittany's like, right. But obviously I was wrong with the way I painted her. And then he'd have to admit. And then I would have to say like, if you want to be friends with me, you actually have to negotiate. And then he'd be like, oh my God, I have to put effort into this friendship. And I'm like, yup, sucks. Because like even the same, like I'll have YouTubers reach out to me, Smith. And they'll be like, hey, I don't really like the way you talk about me on stream. Um, I'd like to like talk about it. I'm like, cool, negotiate with me. Let's talk about boundaries. And I have not heard from them in like two months. So people want to say, hey, you hurt my feelings, but they don't want to sit down with me and negotiate boundaries because they forget 
this is my job. This is my content creation. If you don't want to be a part of that content creation, then you're basically saying you don't want to be my friend because what friend stops their friend from doing their job? And if you want me to talk to you about you differently on stream, we've got to talk about it in private, which he denied me access to doing. So again, people say they want things, but their actions matter. If you want me to have a clear understanding of your boundaries, tell me what they are. I'm not going to guess them. And I'm certainly not going to change the way I talk on stream about the work that I do because I've been consistent for as long as I've been consistent, right? My viewers thought it was such a normal stream. No one knew why it blew up because I've been saying this. I have talked so much shit on Sneeko, but for some reason, DGG just never hears it. Oh, Brittany never talks shit on Sneeko. I have whole ass streams talking shit on Sneeko for hours, calling him a cuck and a pussy and a bottom. Hear you, and then... Yeah, hear you say sneaker, Sneeko every fucking time I ever hear See? you. <laughs> like for the... <laughs> It's just people hear what they want to hear. And so it is what it is, right? So again, I just don't believe people until it makes sense with like the consistency of their personality. And so that's why I think I'm a little bit good at my job is that usually I can be like, mm, that doesn't feel honest. It feels like it sounds honest, but it doesn't feel honest. And that's what I'm looking for is like I want it to match up the feelings and the reality. So it's consistent, right? But like yeah. I don't care. Everyone's I on a journey. Everyone's imperfect. That's the difference between you and Max. I, I just realized mm -hmm. um, that you... Um, Max will describe um, what his uh, perception of you is like, like very explicitly outright. You are mirroring, mm. so you you so if you don't want to look in a mirror because you you're doing a lot of mirroring. Mm. So if you don't want to see that, then then talking to Brittany is scary. Yeah, I could see that. And yeah, yeah, it's one of the look. Just in the status I have with my family, being the mom character, and like people call me like, okay. You're going to judge me. I'm doing this thing. And then they watch my face go like this. And they're like, oh, I know. And I'm like, I know. And I'm like, that's what I do best. Because like, I'm not going to really judge you. I'm not going to condemn you for being a person. I won't. I have no, I don't condemn Steven for being a person. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Like, I don't even condemn Max for being a person. Like, we're just people and we're just doing things. But that's the thing is like, if you come to me, I can't lie to you. And I will be quiet if that's what you prefer. But I can't lie to you. And I'm not going to pretend like I'm not uncomfortable. Like, I remember when, like, again, when people come to me for advice, like, I'm pretty like, okay, like, <laughs> like, what do you, what do you need? What am I doing here? I'm really just like saying what I'm seeing. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I've been wrong in the past. I actually just reviewed Finster, if you know that side of YouTube. And I was wrong about something about him. And I'm going to put that video out this weekend. And I love being told I'm wrong because I agree. Like, he assessed me. He's like, Brittany's wrong. I was like, oh, I am wrong. Cool. Like, because again, I'm just like, imagine me being a nerdy scientist who's just problem solving with no stakes in the game, except I want everyone to like be better, but like not really, because I don't care because no one's going to remember us and we're all going to die. What are you, what are you looking for? Okay. I'm, I'm now what I'm doing is I remember the first time that I talked to you, you were like asking me like, well, you, it looks like you're searching for something, mm -hmm. but what are you search? So what, the, so what are you searching for then? Uh, I am here to satisfy my curiosity in all things. But what? Everything. What is the thing? What is the main cur what is the main curiosity that's that's making you search? Like what Oh, I don't think there's a mm, is there a main curiosity? Well, I'm definitely obsessed with like the idea of ob objective truth. I think that's a very interesting concept. Um, I think I want to work on proving the bubbles theory more and more, even though everyone knows there's bubbles, they'll say it in, they'll say it all the time. Remember my favorite Steven moment? He's like, Brittany, let's say there's a thing called a puddle. And I was like, you mean a bubble? And he's like, mm. and like <laughs> they don't want to admit it. Right. Cause they know, they know we all think differently. We know we're all experiencing different like realities within life, but it's not magical. It's just perception. <laughs> And so my, I think I'm more interested in like what is objective because it's not about perception at that point. But everything we do is about perception. Me being right is about a perception I have. Him being wrong is a perception I have. It might be wrong. It could be objectively wrong, but it's a perception I have. And so I think my curiosity is like how close can I get to objective? And then I think people are interesting and like things are interesting. So I feel pretty satisfied. Like I'm going to catch 22 loop. I'll never feed my curiosity enough. So I'll always be curious. So I'll always be interested in existing because I'll always have things to be curious about. So I'll never yeah. be satisfied. So I'll always be entertained. I'll never be bored for the rest of my life. I see it different. I think that because I don't believe in objective truth uh. necessarily in the same way that you do, sure. I think that you're chasing something un unachievable. Yeah. I mean, kind of, right? Like wisdom. Like I think I'll chase it for the rest of my life. And that's the irony is like you can't be wise if you chase wisdom, but then I need to work on myself to be wise. And so I'm chasing it anyways. And like, maybe that's wisdom, but I won't know until I think I found that's it. That's just how people should be. What is should? 
I'm okay. 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 This is something I believe that it's like an archetype of of perfect health. Mm. Um. Well, there there could be different modes of it. So maybe when I say should, I'm I'm just pointing at one archetype of like. Um. Uh, but like that's a way to be very healthy. Like that's that that's a that that is a, a an archetype of a very functional drive. Like I'm not saying that you're like fitting that archetype. I'm saying that like like that 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 self improvement, trying to be the the a thing that allows you to constantly fixate on self improvement is a thing that I would say is good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say it was good, but yeah. You know, I, you know, I don't know if you know, but I'm not big on making prescriptions for people because I think that's also the route to hell is like the road to hell is paved in good intentions. And I think making that prescription yeah. is like wrong, which is interesting because something I have to let go of that I'm working on is when I see someone and I, I oh, I really got to stop living for people's potential. I'm pretty good at it in general, but there's still always a part of me that's like, oh, the potential here. And I'm like, shh. There is no potential. There's no such thing as potential because if you live for the illusion of the person's potential, like you're not really seeing them or respecting them in the moment that they exist. You're not living in the present. So sometimes when we make prescriptions, we're like denying people where they are presently. And I don't want to fall into that trap. Of course. Either. Yeah. And I completely wholeheartedly agree with you very much. But you know what? I, I think that that thing that you're talking about holding back, like that's the thing I was talking about wanting to see. I want to see what that looks like. You know, I want to see what happens. If you don't hold that back. Like, what, mm. what what ugly thing is lurking under there? Yeah, you know? I mean, I, <laughs> I think I I think I'll keep sharing that with just my partner because he can handle it. Like, I like I unleash that all on him. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Anything else on your video you want to share with my audience at all? Like, I, we liked it. Even the people I, that are like, I don't know if I like Smith. They are like, oh, this video is kind of cool. And I was like, yeah, the video is pretty good. It's just like a random assortment of things that were that came up to my mind, like while I was. But there's like a lot more like things or experiences that I could go into. Mm -hmm. But like one, okay, just like another one. And then like, I mean, we can like wrap it up. But one that I have had on my mind is I've been, I've been thinking about mm -hmm. is his girlfriend and i just want to say like he improved her life greatly like yeah he, it's true it is true that her, he has made her life way better and that is a that is a, a like some people that is that is a, a sacrifice that they can take and some people it's not and like she has a what is like exceptional life because of him um yeah that I, I've seen that happen in certain people. It's kind of crazy to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you feel kind of almost bad for like wanting them to get away from this thing that actually improved their life somehow. I don't think, I don't really, I don't know if I want her to get away, you know, like, but, but I want to say that if I'm going to, if I'm going to talk about their relationship, I just want to have like, say that. Um, but I, I, she, she, one time she, she, she was taking like antidepressants and she was taking like Adderall type thing, mm -hmm. a stimulant. Mm -hmm. And, she mixed up like which one was which mm. and so she was she was taking and she, she wouldn't take like the adderall all the time it was just like for like specific things and she was taking that instead of the antidepressants like all of a sudden without realizing it and she she could never like like apparently this went on for like a week or something i don't know how long it like it went on for a while and she was losing sleep and she didn't know what was going on she was freaking out she was becoming like manic and like paranoid and she and then she was like started like breaking down and crying apparently and that has been like a, a like running this was a running joke that she could never live down all of all of her friends would like like that she is so out to lunch that that she would make that mistake um and this 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 i i i never had this thought until a couple of days ago but how could she have made that mistake like the, the part of the part of the joke was that they looked so different one was a capsule one was ill um but why was she randomly taking one instead? like how did that mm -hmm. happen like i feel like maybe that i don't know i, I don't know i don't i don't <laughs> is she absent minded like, i'm afraid or do you to think even she say that on? I mean, is she allowed to not experiment? Like, is she just embarrassed that she could have experimented? Is it bad to experiment? Like, is... 
You know what I mean? Oh, Do you no, think... I don't think she, I don't think she knew what she didn't know what was happening because she was freaking out and she okay. thought that like she was going crazy because she 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 didn't understand why she wasn't able to sleep. I mean, like it seems like obvious. Like like wait, like, are you insinuating sense, like, someone gave her the wrong pill? Maybe like someone swapped the pill location or something, or I don't mm, know. But maybe. Yeah, yeah, but mm. I can't I can't know that. Yeah, but that that thought that thought's bothering me see we can't know that and maybe she can't know that but somebody knows that and that's that objective truth whoever has access to that they know it and they could not even maybe that's why people have created a god is the idea that maybe god knows the objective truth but like i don't believe in god so i would argue that like some some lens outside of us that doesn't exist has this objective truth somebody knows what happened but it's not either me, it's not mr you. girl or destiny knows the objective truth in one <laughs> It's there somewhere, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. It's a, it was a good, good, good talk. talk. Yeah, I appreciate it. Reach All out right. anytime. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Stuck in my head, in real life falling dead. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I sense i've been nothing but blessed so why's my life a mess please tell me cause i'm sick of thinking yeah i'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool Dun -dun.